Hi, third graders. Welcome back to our class, Read Aloud, which is James and the Giant Peach. And we are now on chapter 25. So let's get started. James didn't want the earthworm and the centipede to get into another argument. So he said quickly to the earthworm, tell me, do you play any kind of music? No, but I do other things, some of which are really quite extraordinary, the earthworm said, brightening up. Such as what? asked James. Well, the earthworm said, next time you stand in a field or in a garden, look around you and then just remember this, that every grain of soil upon the surface of the land, every tiny little bit of soil that you can see has actually passed through the body of an earthworm during the last few years. Isn't that wonderful? That's not possible, said James. My dear boy, it's a fact. You mean you actually swallow soil? Like Matt, said the earthworm, and proudly, in one end and out the other. But what's the point? What do you mean, what's the point? Well, why do you do it? We do it for the farmers. It makes the soil nice and light and crumbly so that things will grow well in it. If you really want to know, the farmers couldn't do without us, actually. We are essential. We are vital. So it is the only natural thing that a farmer would absolutely love us. He loves us even more, I believe, than he loves Ladybug. The Ladybug, said James, turning to look at her. Well, do they love you too? I am told that they do, the Ladybug answered, modestly, blushing a little bit all over. In fact, I understand that in some places, the farmers love us so much that they go out to buy live ladybugs by the sackful and take them home and set them free in their fields. They're very pleased when they have lots of ladybugs in their fields. But why? asked James. Because we gobble up all the little nasty insects that, the, that eat the farmer's crops. It helps enormously and we ourselves don't charge a penny for our service. I think you're wonderful, James had told her. Can I ask you for one special question? Yes, please, please do. Well, is it really true that I can tell how old a ladybug is by counting the spots on your back? Oh no, that's just a children's story, the ladybug said. We never change our spots. Some of us, of course, are born with more spots than others, but we never change them. The number of spots that a ladybug has is simply a way of showing which branch of family we belong to. I, for example, as you can see for yourself, I'm the nine-spotted ladybug. I'm very lucky. It is a fine thing to be. It is indeed, said James, gazing at the beautiful scarlet shell with the nine spots on it. On the other hand, the ladybug went on, some of my lord less fortunate relatives have no more than two spots altogether on their shell. Can you imagine that? They are called the two-spotted ladybugs and are very common and ill-mannered they are. I regret to say. And then, of course, you have the five-spotted ladybugs as well. They're much nicer than the two-spotted ones, although I myself find them a little too saucy to my taste. But they're all, all of them loved, but are all of them truly loved, said, to, said James. Yes, the ladybug answered quietly. They're all loved. It seems that almost everyone around here is loved, said James. How nice is that to actually be loved? Not me, cried the centipede happily. I'm a pest and I'm proud of it. Oh, I am such a shocking, dreadful pest. Hear, hear, the earthworm said. But what about you, Miss Spider, asked James. Aren't you also much loved in this world? Ah, uh, no, Miss Spider answered, sighing long and loud. I'm not loved at all. And yet I do nothing but good. All day I catch flies and mosquitoes in my webs. And I'm a decent person. Oh, I know you are, said James. It is very unfair the way we spiders are treated, Miss Spider went on. 
Why, only last week, your own horrible Aunt Sponge flushed my poor dear father down the bathtub. Oh, that's awful, cried James. I watched the whole thing from my corner up in the ceiling, Miss Spider murmured. It was horrible. We never, ever saw him again. And a large tear rolled down her cheek and fell with a splash on the floor. But it is not very unlucky to kill a spider, James inquired, looking around at the others. Of course it's unlucky to kill a spider, shouted the centipede. It's about the unluckiest thing anyone could do. Look what happened on Aunt Sponge after she'd done that. Bump! We all felt it, didn't we? As the peach wind rolled over her. Oh, that lovely bump. That must have been for you, Miss Spider. Well, it was very satisfactory, Miss Spider answered. Will you sing us a song about it, please? So the centipede did. And here's his song. Aunt Sponge was terrifically fat and tremendously fat, flabby at that. Her tummy and waist were as soggy as paste. It was worse on the place where she sat. So she said, I must make myself flat. I must make myself sleek as a cat. I shall do without dinner to make myself thinner. But along came the peach, oh, the beautiful peach, that made her far thinner than that. Ooh, that was very nice, Miss Spider said. Now sing us one about Aunt Spiker. With pleasure, the centipede answered, also grinning. Aunt Spiker was thin as a wire and as dry as a bone, only drier. She was long and thin. If you carried her in, you could use her to poke at a fire. I must do something quickly, she frowned. I want fat, I want pound a pound pound. I must eat lots and lots of marshmallows and chocolate till I start bulging out all around. Ah, uh, yes, she announced. I have sworn that, I, that I'll that i alter my figure by dawn, cried the peach with a snicker. Ah, I'll alter your figure and ignored her and ironed her out on the lawn. Everybody was clapping and called out for more songs from the centipede, who at once launched into his favorite song of all. After he sang it, Look out, centipede, cried James. Look out! That brings us to chapter 26. Let's see what he has to look out for. The centipede, who had began dancing wildly around the deck during the song, had suddenly gone too close to the downward curved edge of the peach, and for three awful seconds he had stood there teetering on the brink, swinging his legs frantically in circles in an effort to stop him from falling over backwards into space. But before anyone could reach him, down he went. He gave a shriek of terror as he fell, and the others, rushing over to the side of the peach, peering over, saw his poor long body tumbling over and over through the air, getting smaller and smaller until it was out of sight. Silkworm! yelled James. Quick, start spinning! The silkworm sighed, for she was still very tired from spinning all the silk for the seagulls, but she did as she was told. I'm going down after him, cried James, grabbing the silk string as it started coming out of the silkworm and tying the end around James's waist. The rest of you, hold on to silkworm so I don't pull her, pull her over with me. Later on, if you feel three tugs on the string, start pulling me up. He jumped and went tumbling down after the centipede, down, 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 towards the sea below. And you can imagine how quickly the silkworm had to spin to keep up with his full speed falling into air. You'll never see either of them again, cried the ladybug. Oh dear, just when we were all so happy too. Miss Spider, the glowworm, and the ladybug all began to cry. So did the earthworm. I don't care a bit about centipede, the earthworm sobbed, but I really did love that little boy. Very softly, the old green grasshopper started to play a funeral march song on his violin, and by the time he had finished, everyone, including himself, was in a flood of tears. Suddenly, there came three sharp tugs on the rope. Pull! shouted the old green grasshopper. Everyone get behind me and pull! There was about a mile of string to be hauled up and in, but they all worked like mad, and in the end, over the side of the peach, there appeared a dripping wet James with a dripping wet centipede clinging to him tightly with all his 
42 legs wrapped around. He, he saved me, gasped the centipede. He swam around in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean until he found me. My dear boy, the old green grasshopper said, patting James on the back. I do congratulate you. My boots, cried the centipede. Just look at my precious boots. They're ruined from the water. Be quiet, the earthworm said. You are lucky to be alive. Are we still going up and up? asked James. We certainly are, answered the old green grasshopper. And then finally it began to get dark. I know it will be night soon. Why don't we all go down below and keep warm until tomorrow morning, the spider suggested. No, the old green grasshopper said. I think that would be very unwise. It will be safer if we all stay up here throughout the night and keep watch. Then, if anything happens, we would all be ready for it. And that brings us to our next chapter that we'll enjoy tomorrow. All right, my friends, hope you're having a great day and I'll see you again later.